So we need to figure out how we're going to calculate the standard deviation and the variance for a discrete random variable. Now we talked about standard deviation and variance back in chapter two. We went on a really long number crunching excursion to calculate standard deviation and then ultimately we realized I could just get that number from one of our stats. But back in chapter two, I did talk about the relationship between variance and standard deviation. So variance had the notation sigma squared, if we were talking about the population, s squared if we were talking about a sample, and standard deviation was just sigma. And you might be hearing me say sigma a lot. Both of these symbols are sigma. This is lowercase sigma, this is capital sigma. All right, and we have lower and uppercase in our alphabet, so did the Greeks. Lowercase s, uppercase s. All right, so the variance of a discrete random variable is denoted by sigma squared. All right, so here's the variance. We add all of the deviations squared multiplied by their probabilities. All right, so here's a deviation. Your value minus your mean, square it, weight it by its probability. And we go through all of the x values. Once we get that number, we will take the square root of this number and we will get to the standard deviation. And that's the same relationship we had in chapter two, that if I had the variance and I square rooted this number, I got down to standard deviation. Or on the flip of that, if I had a standard deviation and I squared this number, I got up to variance, okay? All right, and that's all fine and good. We're still gonna use our TI-8384 to find this number. So let's work on, on how we find this. And we're just gonna take a hard pass on that formula today. All right, here we go. Individuals applying for a certain license are allowed up to four attempts to pass the licensing exam. Let X note the number of attempts made, about, made by a randomly selected applicant. The PDF is of X is as shown, or is as follows. So I heard my variable, right? It says, X is the number of attempts made by a particular applicant or by a randomly selected applicant. All right, and you can see we can make up to four attempts. If I'm looking at this, it looks like it's, it's semi-difficult to pass on the first attempt. Only 10% of folks pass this license exam on the first attempt. All right, 20% get it by the second. But I can feel the weight over here. Right? This is a skewed left distribution because most folks are taking three or four attempts to pass that licensing exam, right? This is more rare. If I was gonna think of this as a histogram, this would have 0.4, then 0.3, then 0.2, then 0.1, right? I can feel that it's skewed left. And all of that's fine and good. It asks us to find the mean and the standard deviation. So I want us to consult our trait table. I want us to start getting into these habits, right? This is a discrete variable, number of attempts taken to pass a licensing exam. The table was just flat out given to me. So I, I don't even have to make this thing, I have it. If I want the mean, I'm gonna do one bar stats L1, L2, and I'm gonna read X bar. And it's similar for the standard deviation. I'm gonna read one bar stats L1, L2. Typically we read SX. And if you remember back in chapter two, I said there will be one exception to it. I will say, I said at chapter four, this thing's gonna be blank and we're gonna to have to read sigma. And that's what I put here, or read sigma of x if s of x is blank. So let's go play this out. I wanna show you how this works. Clear out your lists. Like always, let's put our variable into L1 and our probabilities into L2 and see how we can find the mean and standard deviation for this discrete random variable. So once we get that in there, let's go back to our home screen. All right, stat, go to the right to calc. Let's do enter, or let's hit enter or hit one, and I'm gonna do L1, but I'm gonna weight it with the probabilities in L2. All right, so our variable is in L1, weight it with the probabilities in L2, let's hit enter. And there's my mean, 
So let me write that down. I see x bar is 3. So we're going to say here the average is 3. Now in terms of the standard deviation, yes, we usually read sx, but you can see it's blank there. So that means I want to read the sigma number. I'm going to read 1. Okay. And with everything, you need some units. All right, so what are the units on this? Well, what was this? Again, one baby, one day going to class, one mom, I don't know, one apple. None of that. It was the number of attempts, attempts excuse me, made by an applicant. So this was three attempts. So on average, somebody has to take this test for their license three times. All right, and the standard deviation was one attempt. And just as a bonus question, even though it wasn't here, I want you to think, if I had asked you for the variance, right? if instead of this saying standard deviation, if this had said sigma squared, what would you have done? Well, you would have taken this number and you would have squared it. Right? So in this case, the variance is also 1, but that's because 1 squared is 1. If this had been any other number, I would have squared it all the same. And, and with variance, I don't really um, concern myself with units because the units never make sense. The units are technically attempts squared, but that has no meaning in the real world. And the variance, at least back in the day before we had technology, this was just a means to get to this end. So if you've ever heard that phrase, it's a means to an end. We only had variance so that we could square root it and ultimately get standard deviation. So I don't really care about the units here. I really do care about the units on standard deviation. Okay, so with that, let's revisit a couple of those examples. We're going back to the moms and back to Nancy, and let's get their standard deviations.